Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for everyone being here. Um, this is a space where I'm going to teach you guys as much as I can about relationship skills to power you all to be relationship experts as much as you can in your own lives. And I'm sure people are going to come to you and ask you for relationship advice, even if you didn't ask for it, because we live in a world full of relationships all around us. So it's always awesome to level up our skills, just like we level up our skills in our own personal lives to improve. We can also improve our relationship lives, um, and it's a lifelong skill that we can just keep building on. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all. Um, if we want to you know, reach as many people to level up their relationship skills, please like and retweet the room. And a bit of background about myself. So I specialize um, in, in relationships and I have a master's in clinical behavioral psychology. I have written published papers. Um, I, you know, do what I preach. I have an amazing husband who's actually here with us today. So I will be held accountable. And I even have my brother here today. So um, that's awesome. I really appreciate the support. And um yeah, I've helped uh, a ton of friends and family with their relationships, and I'm just trying to give back in a big way, as, as big as I can. So that's the purpose of these sessions. And at any point at all, if anyone has any relationship questions, any stories they want to share, any comments they want to make, it is so welcome. We love hearing from people. It makes us so happy. So at any point, request to speak and say something. Um, yeah, we get so excited when that happens and we just learn better that way. So um, feel free to do that at any point. Um, it's always welcome. So let's recap last week just to be able to kind of refresh our memories or for people that weren't there, they'll get a little snippet of last week's skill. So last week, the topic was on who pays and finances. And um, one of the things that we established with um, the data that was out is that um, money issues are a leading cause for divorce. And we went through the statistics. And then the other thing we, we um, kind of preached on that one was, you know, if both people are happy with their finances, um, or having a prenup or not having a prenup, we're okay with it because both people are happy. It's only a problem when one person isn't happy and then we have to work on it. So um, that's a key thing. Um, you know, even if you hear a situation with someone else, it's very easy to want to kind of weigh, put your opinion in there. And it's so easy for conflict to just come out of nowhere when you know, both people are happy with the situation, but external people are bringing in the problem. So it's it's only an issue we address if someone is not okay with the financial situation. And then we figure out what is a system that works and, and just keep improving it from there. The other thing with finances that's so important that we covered last week was not to ignore it, not to push it under the rug, um, because it will come out. Oh my gosh, I see someone that wants to speak. I'm going to, yes, awesome, awesome. So at any point, feel free to um, speak. So yeah, so we learned that it's so important with finances not to um, push it under the rug because it's so easy to do that. Um, and, you know, you might think, oh, this is a tiny thing. It doesn't bother me that much. Um, and you just keep going on with your life and then it builds up and then it builds up. And with anything that builds up with frustration, it needs to come out honestly as quickly as possible because if we keep letting it build up, we can naturally feel distant from our partner or more anxious towards our partner or just have an explosion um, reaction at something little that came out of nowhere. And then your partner will think this all came out of the blue and it's actually been building up for a long time. And a lot of these things can be subconscious. So when you say things are okay, but you're a bit frustrated, um, you don't know that you're actually building up all of this resentment against the other person. And so it's kind of subconscious to some extent, unless you're really aware of it, which is great if you are. But yes, address things when you're even a little bit annoyed, a little bit frustrated, because it's much better than letting it build up. 
So that was last week. And does anyone want to say anything? I see. I heard a little sound. Yo, you're making a great point. Making a great point. I love it. You know, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. You know, if you want a relationship to work, you have to have a lot of money. Money is everything. Let me just say it's money. To make you, to make your woman happy. That's it. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Love isn't it um like money is a you know a, an important component of relationships um for sure. Um love can still, you know, <laughs> love love is still um like amazing and you know you can still make it through with you know however money you have, but having money just can elevate a relationship if everything else is working great. Money can just really help it flourish a lot more because you have more choices you can spend more time with your loved ones um you can you know have more holidays with them spend more time with um your partner your kids if you have them so i definitely um agree that money is an important element financial freedom is an important element of of love as well so thank you for bringing that up well, thank you sure thing sure thing all right so this week's topic, boundaries, boundaries. So this is a topic that we've probably heard in our lives, you know, you should have better boundaries or, you know, I don't know, all sorts of ways boundaries can have um, can have been brought up um, while you have just watched TV shows, movies, all sorts of things. So another saying that we probably have heard a lot in relation to marriage and relationships is happy wife, happy life. So I want to ask the audience in the room today, if you show me a thumbs up, if you think happy wife, happy life is true. Let's see some thumbs up if you think that saying is a good saying. It's true. It's what it's all about. Here we go. We got a thumbs up. We go. We got a fist over there. Anyone else want to weigh in? Okay, what if I, I change it around? We got another, we got two more thumbs up. Okay, what if I change it around and say happy husband, happy life? Is that true, do you think? Thumbs up, who thinks that's true? It's not really said. I don't think I've heard anyone say that, but no thumbs up. <laughs> Can I say something? Yeah, go for it. I, I don't see the reason why people got married, but as far as you're happy with the man, as your boyfriend or your girlfriend, it's okay. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. your preference, and that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, and that's your boundary. Because it seems like that. Um, some mm -hmm. people don't like to be controlled by someone. You understand? They don't like to be controlled. When, when you when you get married to a man, maybe he wants to control. You want to say, "This is my house. This is what you'll be doing." But some ladies don't like it. So, if you got married to him. Maybe he would like to control it and you don't like it. That's where the problem is. Yeah, if that's what marriage looks like, if you enter a marriage and you don't like that, that doesn't sound like, you know, a great, great situation. So absolutely, you want to make sure if um, you want to get into a marriage that it's something that you're happy with. So if that's something that you're not comfortable with, that's okay. Um, and finding someone who's on the same page with you um, about that is awesome. So it's figuring out kind of where our boundaries are, what our deal breakers are, so we can make really good decisions up front. So with this question I asked about happy wife, happy life, or happy husband, happy life, and I'm sorry it's related to marriage a lot. It could just, um, you know, it could be happy woman, happy man, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, the main thing I wanted to get across is that both are important. Um, it's not just one. Um, you know, if, for example, happy wife, happy life does get thrown around a lot. And um, it is important that the husband is also, or, you know, both parties are happy and an effort is made um, on both sides. And so that statement doesn't really take account um, the other half of the relationship that we need to take care of. And um, that statement also makes people um, kind of think that men have to just provide 
um, say yes to everything a woman wants to make her happy. Because if he wants to have a happy life, he needs to say yes to everything. And that's actually something that um, was very real in my relationship with my husband. And my husband is here right now. And it took him ages to figure out that he could say no or say I that's something that I'm not comfortable with or um, you know, I have a different preference. And this uh, for for years, I thought he knew he had a choice. And whenever he stated um, that, you know, he feels a certain way, I'm very open to, um, you know, being flexible and things like that. But I, we would notice it because he would say yes a lot. And then at some point, he would get, <laughs> he would get quite frustrated And the resentment would build up and he's not intentionally, you know, trying to be resentful, but it would naturally build up when you, you know, have given more than you have and you've gone beyond your bandwidth and um, then you're becoming resentful. And like one more thing can just, you know, have a big reaction and um, it can be out of nowhere for someone else. So um, I actually want to arm on. You want, do you want to speak on this since this is something that you really relate to and to share with people here? Sure, I can say some words. Yeah, I mean, I just want to echo a lot of the stuff you said. I feel like statements like happy wife, happy life make you feel like, hey, like, you know, in order to be happy, you have to kind of do, you know, the things that you know your partner asks you to do. But I guess what I found is that even though that kind of makes sense, you know, even though that kind of works or helps in the short term, like in the long term, if that's not something you can sustain, if you can't, you know, if there are things you can't say yes to that you get resentful about that you then say yes to, uh, it'll kind of, you know, be bad for the relationship in the long term, mm-hmm. at least, you know. That was kind of my experience with it. So I just, I don't know. I kind of think like, you know, if I want to be happy in the long term, there are, you know, some things in the short term that I want that I need to ask for or that I need to push back against or else both of us are going to be unhappy in the long term. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, you know, I'm, I wouldn't know when he's saying yes, but is like secretly pulling all this heavy weight to say yes to me. I would think like, oh, he's just saying yes, it's not a big deal. But actually, by him saying yes, he was like moving a mountain to say yes. And I'm not even appreciating that he's like moving a mountain for me to say yes. So it's really important to communicate, even when you're saying, okay, like I can do that, but just know it's really hard for me. And of course, I love him. So I'm going to try and help as much as I can. Hand up, go for it. I think a lot of uh, another thing I kind of assumed is I think you assumed that kind of what's easy and hard for the other person and their boundaries are the same as your boundaries. So, like, there are things that, you know, my wife asked me to do that, you know, I wouldn't ask her to do because those things are hard for me. And, you know, for her, it's it's not that big of a deal to ask because like, they're, you know, they may be easy for her. Like the same things I find heavy are not the same things that she finds heavy. So, you know, this kind of difference, I think, can also result in, you know, some situations where, man, you feel like you're really doing a lot and uh, you know, it's just kind of hard to do because you know, hey, people don't have the same boundaries and they kind of assume that the boundaries are symmetrical when, you know, in every area when they aren't really. Yes, you're definitely touching on love languages. So if you've ever heard me speak, um, that's a whole thing in itself. Um, if you're interested or heard of love languages and you want to learn more about that natural difference of how we feel loved um, being different to the other person usually. Um, A good place to start is just to type into Google love languages quiz. And I think it's the first one that pops up and it's free and it's about 30 questions. 
And there's a five main love language types that they simplify it to. Obviously, it's not that simple, but it's a great way to start to see some differences. So, for example, Armand is talking about some differences we had. And just to tie it in for you guys to, to quickly grasp it, um, there, there's five types of love languages um, in the book um, or in that quiz. There's um, quality time, gifts, words, physical touch, and acts of service. And um, for my husband, acts of service was the most important one. And to me, it was the least important one. So that's actually quite a good um, tool for us to know for awareness that we have that difference. Um, because, you know, for example, if I bring him a glass of water or um, do his dishes when it's his turn um, to help, you know, if, if he's got a lot on his plate at the moment or um, if... I will remember, always remember this instance where like his pillow is about to fall and I catch it and I just, you know, make sure his pillow doesn't fall from his head. Like these actions are so easy for me. I don't even think twice about them. Um, maybe if someone did, like if he did them for me, I would be like, eh, like it's nice, but like I could have done it myself. So that's, and like for him, it's the world. <laughs> like he's like, can't, can't comprehend that I did that for him. And it's so huge and things like that. So there's a huge mismatch. And so for me, it's really easy to do these things. Um, so that's great. That's a really helpful um, piece of information I have that I can do these little things to make him feel loved, which is quite easy for me. And then, for example, for him, if he comes home, because mine's quality time and I absolutely love watching TV shows and movies, if he comes home and he's like, hey, let's watch a movie together, your choice, I would just like think that's the most amazing thing on this planet. And like, if I did that to him, he you would, would die. I, <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> I would be like, what did I do to deserve this? So. Um, and you know, if I did that for him and he came home and I was like, we can watch a movie, your choice. Like that would not be great for him. He would be like, I would go rather read a book, or, you know, play video games or do, do, do something else. So that's why it's so helpful to know what is heavy and light and what your partner appreciates. And I know I'm covering so much content here. I'm going to try and peel it back and stick to boundaries. Uh, but at least you've heard of love languages now and can dive into that more um, if you want to um, so tying it back in we just want to make sure that we kind of know when our cup is getting full and if you're someone that um, can notice when you're starting to feel overwhelmed that's great so if someone's asking you to do something and you're starting to feel overwhelmed that's a sign that your cup is almost full so that is a really good point for you to communicate be like, hey, like maybe I can do this one thing for you, but just know my cup is really full right now. I'm really like almost overflowing. So I probably can't do much more or I can't do what you asked. I can do this version of it or I'm really sorry. My cup is really full right now and I don't think um, I have it in me, but, you know, can we talk about it? And I want to make sure you feel loved too and um, things like that. So that's... Um, that's that awareness of knowing what your bandwidth is when it's starting to become full is so important. So that's something to really be aware of uh, when you're thinking about boundaries. Um, and knowing that if you keep letting little things slide, you are likely to just feel more and more resentful over time without it being intentional. It's just subconsciously building up in the background. Um, so usually it's better to say no or compromise then build that resentment. And I know that's kind of what Armand was talking about. In that short term, it's going to be harder to be honest. And, you know, maybe you have to, you know, your ego is at play and you don't want to say that, you know, your cup is kind of full because you want to feel like you can handle everything. But being able to say your cup is nearly full or is full is a great thing that's going to help you in the long run and help your relationship in the wrong run. So it's better to say no or compromise than build up that resentment of saying yes and then all this other stuff happening. All right. So anyone want to say anything at this stage about anything before we move on? Hello. Hello. I, I, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and speak. 
I love your program. I love what you do. I love your space. It's, too, it's late here. Yeah. It's late. I'm going to bed. I'm, I'm going to join you some other time. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Please, can um, I join your sure. can I join your Discord server? Yes, yes. You just have to click my picture, and the link in the bio will have the Discord. There's no barrier to entry to get in. Okay. We'd love to have you. But thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. All right, so uh, some more real-life examples for you guys to kind of grasp boundaries. Um, I'm going to say some of, um, you know, my boundaries, some of my husband's boundaries, just so you can hear some examples and try and figure out what your own boundaries are. So part of boundaries is also knowing your deal breakers. So, for example, in um, our marriage, for me, I've clearly communicated that cheating and domestic violence is a deal breaker for me. So that's a very clear thing um, we've communicated to each other. Um, so that's, for example, a good deal breaker to have. Um, boundaries um, for me, um, because I had an abusive father who was also physically violent, um, my boundaries um, kind of involve, you know, if someone throws things out of anger you know, punches something, bangs a door, um, yells um, loudly, cusses uh, loudly, even cussing, I have a negative association with that with my dad, um, or making quick sudden movements when they're upset. Um, those things are boundaries for me. So if I ever experienced something like that um, with my husband, I would, I would communicate that quite quickly that that's a boundary for me. And sometimes it's hard to hear um, and hard to communicate. And um, But, you know, it's it's better than putting it under the rug and then fearing your partner, um, you know, in this specific situation or other things that can escalate a lot more and then break down your relationship. So I know those things are kind of boundaries for me that I do highlight. Um, for him, um, yeah, for a whole while, he didn't know he had you know, the power to say no and have boundaries. But one of the things that, um, you know, he slowly started practicing with boundaries that I've noticed is um, I, he's called me out and said, it's not acceptable to speak with me in that tone. And tone is super important to him. Um, oh my gosh, I see someone wanting to speak. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm just connecting just connecting ballistic whenever you, you want to speak absolutely feel free to jump in um so yeah just so that one for him was his tone was you know he's his boundary was me speaking to him with a particular tone that was like harsh and cold and like escalating where my my voice would get more intense and so um, like you know after I started speaking that way He'll say, you know, it's not acceptable to speak to me like that. Um, and I would have to take a step back and, and realize, yep, okay, I've crossed a boundary by speaking like this. Um, and I, I really try and regulate my tone. I might take a bit of a, you know, one, two minute break to just be able to slow down my heart rate and things like that and speak with a calmer tone. But that's something that I know he's practiced to be able to speak up for himself. Um, uh, before I jump into anything else, does anyone else have any boundaries or deal breakers that they know they have themselves that they would like to share? Okay. Yes, I see a hand. Go for it. Um, well, I would say for myself personally, coming out of like kind of a fairly rough like I don't like to use the word lightly but like pretty much a like a narcissistic really situation like really you know a lot of emotional turmoil and shit and abuse so like really anything that's kind of, this is kind of a broad blanket but um I would say just like it, it yeah this is, it's really hard to put a finger on but like state you know that that kind of eggshell state you know just just real real inconsistent Really inconsistent emotion, you know. Um, that's always kind of a. I don't even know if that's a boundary so much. That's like a like a no for me. But 
yeah, just uh, just kind of a, like like real real apparent signs of disrespect. But that's like obvious. I would think in any relationship, you know, as a boundary. So it's not it's nothing new. But um, but yeah, just kind of the and lack of um, yeah, just lack of a lack of a mutual kind of um, respect and 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 uh, and that that sort of that sort of treatment. You know, it's really important to be valued in your relationship. So you know. A lack of value, I think, being presented is probably a huge boundary for me, for sure. That's amazing. So you touched on quite a few boundaries. And, you know, sometimes we don't have the vocabulary to be able to express, um, you know, the boundaries that we have. I think you did a pretty good job at expressing it because I understood it. Um, but if I was to kind of try and find words to be more specific about them. Um, I would say the first boundary you brought up was, um, you know, if someone's emotions go from really happy, like from one end of the spectrum to the other, that inconsistency in the emotions that's unexpected, like, you know, they're happy and then suddenly they get really mad and it comes out of nowhere and you don't understand where it's coming from. Um, you know, that huge swing without explanation seems to be something that you're not comfortable with. So if you ever notice someone doing that, it's okay to call it out and be like, um, you know, I just noticed you went from zero to 100 um, in two minutes. And, you know, that's really hard for me to, to grasp. And, um, you know, if you're upset about something, I really need you to be able to you know, for you, if it's speaking in a calm voice or whatever it is for you, you, like try and get as specific as possible, because usually if someone loves you, um, they will try and do um, what it is that you're asking for. Um, so being as specific as possible is helpful. And then the other one is you mentioned respect. And so that's a great general boundary to have. Um, but as you can realize with these um, that we brought up, respect can mean so many different things so um for example if someone um you know rolls their eyes at you or um makes fun of you or attacks your character um by saying you're so selfish you know not saying um the behavior so i feel like when you didn't you know pay for my ice cream i felt like I really wanted you to pay for my ice cream. You know, it becomes about the ice cream, not that the person's character is selfish. So we never want to attack character. We want to attack the behavior. So um, by, you know, feeling respected, what is it in their behavior that made you feel disrespected and calling that out? It's so important to call out specifically what they've done, which is disrespectful. So then they can, um, and then tell them what the correct answer is. So, um, for Arman, he was like, you know, it's unacceptable that you speak to me with that tone. Um, you know, he can continue that and say, it makes me feel disrespected. Um, I need you to speak with a calmer tone. And then so I know what specifically is wrong. And I know what specifically I need to do better. And it's, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to immediately do it. But I probably need to take a few minutes at least to be able to get to that level. Um, and then and then practice that. So love your boundaries. And um, we're practicing the skill of getting as specific as possible. So I really appreciate you bringing up those examples. Um, so we could dive into them more. That was a point that I forgot to even mention. So thank you yeah. for bringing that up. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, really, what it, I think what it comes down to in most situations, with with whatever your boundaries are, it's the, it's the, the, um, the reciprocation of acknowledgement and kind of that presence and awareness and, and knowing that there has been, there is some sort of uh, friction or some sort of um, disharmony and actually, you know, being, um, being uh, willing and not even, not even willing, but proactive and, and kind of like addressing it and, and uh, acknowledging each other in that way. So, I mean, we could do a whole like two hour long special about, that you know the shit that I that you know the things that I've experienced in these in this especially this past relationship that definitely 
probably be a lot of wisdom for maybe some people, maybe not, maybe, but, but, you know, so it's a very broad spectrum for me to, to be able to fully touch on. But, um, but yeah, just that, just that acknowledgement, man, just that awareness, like, okay, I'm aware there is something that I've done to kind of break your boundary or cross your boundary. So, you know, what can, what can be done together to kind of correct that so it doesn't happen again, you know? So that's, that's very important. It's like one of the basic principles and core values in a relationship, I believe. Yes. Yes. That growth mindset that you, and, and that care and that respect and acknowledgement to the other person, um, you know, something I've touched on in quite a few of the, um, previous weeks was it's so easy to get defensive when someone, you know, says something that they don't like about you. We all naturally get defensive when someone says, I don't like that you did this. And then your immediate response as a human is like, well, I don't like that you did this. And then you just get nowhere. <laughs> um, so one of the skills that, you know, we touched on, uh, I think it was a, a few weeks ago, was who got upset first. And, you know, really um, being able to address that before you move on because one person upset at a time is better than two people upset at a time. So we have a higher chance of resolving it. So, Yes, this growth mindset is so important to even, you know, be able to grasp the concept that, you know, there's something you can improve on and you would want to improve on it because it would make your partner feel more loved and that is reciprocated on both sides. Um, absolutely, absolutely. If you ever want to share a story, I know you said you have, you know, hours worth of content, um, but anything you feel like um, would be helpful for people in this space to know, um, just know you you definitely have the space um, to be able to to share at, at any level you're comfortable with. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so another thing, I, so we do have Reddit questions we can go through and practice our boundaries. We'll get to them in a second. I wanted to also highlight that, you know, saying no is a bit glorified in society as well with, um, you know, being super empowered and you just say no to everything and that is also, um, you know, if it's overdone, it's not a good thing. And being kind to someone else when they, um, you know, are wanting something is a good thing. And it really helps when it's reciprocated. So I guess that's the catch. You feel like, you know, if you're someone that feels like you're just giving and giving and giving and it's not being reciprocated, um, that's where the problem is. And, um, you know, that needs to be directly addressed and specifically addressed with what behaviors need to be improved on and then the other person really does need to take it seriously um, because that's that's kind of how relationships work and and you need to feel loved as well it's not a one-way street where just they feel loved and um, they also need to make you feel loved so um, it's a it's a good balance that you need to figure out in your own lives um, what is the healthy balance of saying no versus saying yes and you know where your bandwidth is how full your cup is with your life around you um, and then also it's a worthy goal to try and practice increasing your bandwidth and figuring out what do you need to do to be able to increase your bandwidth so you can say yes more to your partner or be able to compromise more with your partner um, and make them feel loved and and have them reciprocate as well. Um, so that also lies with what you value, what you prioritize. Um, knowing yourself is, um, you know, a big component of that. Um, and just some areas where this could um, come up that we haven't talked about so far. One could be um, sexual boundaries. Um, and, you know, this is something that if this is important to you, it's a good thing to think about it. Um, so everyone is different. And so I'm not judging what people have um, boundaries for themselves. Um, but I'll be completely transparent. And I know a lot of people aren't like me. Um, but for example, I had a lot of um, boundaries um, through, you know, um, like kind of in the dating process where I was willing to go, a certain um, amount sexually while dating, while being boyfriend, girlfriend, while being engaged and while being married. And um, to me, the, the risk of um, having kids and, you know, getting STIs or getting my heart broken too much if I had um, sex with the person before marriage was 
very um, hard for me to kind of um, be okay with. And so I had to, you know, know that about myself and had to communicate that with uh, my partner. And actually, my husband was my first boyfriend. So I didn't have practice doing this before. And we were doing international long distance between Australia and the United States. And thank goodness, we're now happily living together in the United States. Um, But there was, um, you know, he proposed at two and a half years, and we got married at three years. And he really um, did make me feel respected um, with my boundaries. And Um, that was a huge ask. It really was. And I really appreciate him for being okay with that. And so I didn't have that regret with sexual boundaries because um, I was able to know what they are, communicate them and have them respected. So whatever it is for you guys, um, it's okay if you don't have those same boundaries. Um, Just if you do have boundaries, um, know them and communicate them and see if the, your partner is willing to respect them. And it's, um, you know, obviously a great sign if they are and a question mark if they're not, and you'll have to figure it out from there. But knowing that is good. Another one, um, being friends with exes um, is a common one where if someone doesn't want to be with you, um, you know, in the long run, but they still want to be your friend, Um, that's usually something that from all the experiences I've had have not worked out well. Um, So for a lot of people, their boundaries are that if you're not going to be with me forever and we, you know, have romantic feelings for each other, then being friends and staying in touch um, is not okay because it can usually get in the way of future relationships and because you've been physically attracted to them in the past, it's quite hard to be able to let that go. So um, that's, you know, a rule of thumb, but doesn't apply to everyone. You know, always take things with a grain of salt, but just in general, um, that's usually a common boundary for people. Um, And another one is, um, you know, if you guys get really mad at each other and you want to take a break in the relationship, this is the classic friend's Um, drama that they had where, you know, did they take a break? Did they not take a break? Um, So with this one, it's also um, usually not a good idea to take a break in the relationship because if you do take a break, um, you know, you may, you know, very naturally find someone else or just start the pattern of knowing when things get tough that you can just put the relationship aside and not work through it. So it is, um, you know, and someone might have a boundary and say, um, it's actually a deal breaker for me. If you're, if you're going to take a break from me, then I don't want to be in a relationship with you. So please figure out if someone wants to take a break, like, what does that mean? And does any of the people in this relationship have a deal breaker with something like that? Um, And make sure you're on the same page. So usually, Um, people give it a go and try and resolve things and not take a break that's usually people's boundaries Um, but you know every relationship um, can be different again um, you know for some people they have certain fetishes they want in you know in their sex life and that's something that's great to know up front before you get with someone and discussing it and just making sure that they're okay with that or you can figure out a compromise rather than keeping it secret and it's such a big important thing for you and then just saying how important it is and them not getting it and then you feeling really frustrated so with dating so important to know your boundaries your deal breakers and then go from there to be able to um, make sure you're with the right person and um, that you've communicated the things important to you. Okay, now we're going to get into Reddit questions. But before we do, does anyone have any um, anything they want to share? Any anything at all? Any questions? Any stories? Anything that was unclear or want further clarity on? Okay, okay we got beautiful listeners today. Okay, so this is a Reddit question that um, was made in the last week, and the title of it is. Is it weird to see your partner for not even an hour a week? And it's a 26-year-old female and a 34-year-old male. And um, the background on this one is 
Um, I've been with a new partner for a few weeks now. I've spent two and a half hours with him in the last three weeks, at the very most four, despite living three minutes from each other. There always is a reason he can't see me or is just too busy. Is this normal? He's a very good dad, has his children often, but works two on two off at work generally. And I just think surely he's got to be an occasion that he could see me. I have borderline personality disorder, so I'm not great at judging if my behavior is appropriate sometimes. So any advice would be appreciated. And the summary was new partner has only spent 2.5 hours of time with me in the first month of our relationship, living three minutes from my house. Is this normal? What do we think, guys? Thumbs up for is this normal? Thumbs down for it's not normal? Anyone who want to weigh in on what they think? Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, guys, if you think it's okay. It's okay to see. We got a thumbs down. We got two thumbs down. Okay, okay. Not okay. We're getting a strong not okay vibes. Okay, so, ooh, I got a request. Yes, go for it, go for it. Um, yeah, I don't know, not, I mean, no, well, no, it depends, though, if they've just been started dating, dude's got family, kids, and if he's working two on, two off, and she's gauging, like, what, three, I didn't hear, was it, like, three days or three weeks or something? two weeks maybe it was something yeah so, about a month they've been together yeah. about a month. <laughs> so yeah that's not very much at all um especially three minutes apart uh it sounds like um yeah no that's not really much that it's but it it sounds like very fresh so it's hard to uh put a whole lot of expectation on it but if that's the case then i think if somebody really wants to see you then they can make time you know no matter no matter what in unless there's some extreme circumstance Love that. Absolutely. I agreed with everything you said. We're still getting a lot of thumbs down. Amazing over there. Um, did anyone else want to weigh in on this before I go forward? Armon. So, you know, if I was the person, it wouldn't be okay with me. But for example, like, I think there are, it seems like it's clearly bothering this person, which to me means it's not okay. There are some people that may not bother. You know, there are some business people that travel a lot and like really want to have a partner that kind of is doing their own thing and has their own life. So I, I think as long as both people are okay with it, it, it's fine. But in this case, it seems to bother the person who asked the question. So she should, you know, just tell her partner and tell her like, hey, like this is, this is what I need. Is this something that you can give? Yes, yes. Practicing all our skills. Love it. Love it. Mazda, I saw you come up. Did you want to weigh in at all? Yeah. So I think an interesting thing was, I think they mentioned he was a father. So I'm I'm thinking there's might be kids in the scenario where he might be super busy with work, looking after the kids. Does he want to, um, does he have time to leave the kids? Like, does he have enough money to maybe have a babysitter look after them or maybe not at the moment? Or like, how does he introduce the partner to the kids. Does he want to do that now? Or does he feel like he's got enough space where the kids can accept that? I think that these are some questions that might be going on behind the scenes. But yeah, I think it was definitely super strange that it was like only two hours. Like I think that's super low. And it didn't seem like it didn't mention he was like super busy with work or very stressed with the kids. It, it wasn't um, stated, but I think this is some of the reasoning behind it. Yeah, yeah, we, the, there could be a ton of things that we don't know about, you know, um, he could, he maybe has an illness that we don't know about, maybe his parents are over, um, you know, so yeah, there's absolutely all these other things that could be at play. And um, the first thing about this um, scenario that I would see, um, or if you had a friend that came to you with something like this, is that 
acknowledging, being aware that she's upset about this. And it's okay to be upset about things. So if she's upset about it, she needs to go talk to him about it and, um, you know, make a very clear respect, uh, like um, request, sorry. So we don't, it's not, maybe she only wants to see him, you know, five hours a week, like who knows, what, you know, and maybe he thinks, oh, she wants me to see her every single day for two hours. And, you know, until you have that conversation, you don't know what bo both people's expectations are. Or maybe, you know, his wife just died or like they, you know, are going through a divorce court proceeding. Who knows? But, you know, these things um, shouldn't be um, put under the rug. So I don't know if she has brought this up with him directly um, and, you know, just asking, hey, can we hang out? Hey, can we hang out? That's not expressing that you're not happy with the current situation and this is so you know be direct that it's okay to say I feel upset um, about this and I would really like to or would really like this and I wanted to talk about it to hear your feelings on the topic you know however you word it in your own words is okay but you want to be honest when you're even a little bit frustrated and have that conversation so you guys can figure it out Another thing um, that I just want to highlight to you guys, at the very end, she said, I have borderline personality disorder, so I'm not great at judging if my behavior is appropriate sometimes. So any advice would be appreciated. So one of the downside of, of you know, having labels like diagnoses put on you, um, sometimes correctly or indirect, incorrectly, and, you know, what you learn in psychology if you study it is that it's not just you have a mental disorder or you don't or you check all these boxes for all these mental disorders it's a dimension and it's a spectrum and someone can you know show tendencies of having it and then later on not show it so it's not like a forever thing that someone has so um, I just felt a bit bad because you know this person is really doubting herself because um, she's been labeled with borderline personality disorder and she has every right to feel um, not okay with that because it's just her feelings and we're allowed to feel what we feel so you can express when you feel upset about things and if they care about you and you're speaking clearly then usually you can work it out and if you know they're being disrespectful to you then maybe it's a, a bullet dodged early which is a good thing um, because you're not just accepting that as normal behavior so that was a little note I wanted to make on that um Let's go to the next one. Okay, so this is a 23-year-old female and um, another 23-year-old female. So how can I tell my girlfriend that her obsession over a fictional char character is killing our relationship? So this one's a bit of a funny one. Um, it says, and now I'm going to give you a bit of backstory. So note, we're long distance and have been dating for three years now. So quite a while. Um, there's an animated movie that came out a couple weeks ago. And since that day, my girlfriend has seen it. She developed a big obsession over the villain. It's common to get obsessed with a fictional character. I've been there. But with my partner, it's out of the pocket. <laughs> um, she would use character AI to flirt with a character, be in a relationship with him, do inappropriate things with the AI and be completely delusional. She only talks about said character and doesn't engage in any conversation that doesn't revolve about him. I told her it was making me feel bad, almost replaced even if the character isn't real and that is making me feel insecure. She told me I was being immature for reacting like this and that she would rather be with said fictional character because it gives her more love and attention than I do. Also, she said it's a me problem if I get upset, but she even told me that she is so into the character that she forgets we're in a relationship. I'm not sure about what to do here. I can't even show her the slightest bit of jealousy or insecurity, but if I ever show interest in a new character, I get yelled at saying I'm cheating on her or whatever. Not to mention she's an artist and keeps on drawing the character even if I paid her $40 for a commission I've been waiting for six months now. 
If you guys have advice for me, that would be great. It's going, it's been going on for a week now. Um, okay. <laughs> Run away really fast. <laughs> Grab your things and leave as quickly as possible. And that's what I would say for that one. I appreciate you. Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? <laughs> I'm happy to give my opinion. So yeah. it was I really didn't like that. Um the person who was accept um obsessed with the character wouldn't even listen to the other person who was like, nah dude, you're wrong. Even though like it's like disrupting the relationship. So I think there was a lot of red flags. Um like it didn't seem like they were even able to talk about it or like it would happen everywhere. Like just watching like you'd just be watching a show and just like like oh I like that character a little bit. And it's like you're breaking the relationship from the other person's perspective. So, dude, I think this needs like a intervention, or like they should just break up. But it seems like it's a super strange situation. Um, yeah, it, it, maybe she's not even looking for a relationship. Maybe she's looking to just be with that character in her own way for the rest of her life. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Is anyone else want to weigh in on this? I'll just give you guys the floor just in case you want to step up. Okay, okay. So with this one, yeah, I was reading this because I had to read this first before I chose to bring it on today's um, Twitter space. And I was I was so mad at this, this girl that's obsessed with um, the, the, the anime character. Um, let me just quickly accept we've got a new speaker. Kimia, what do you think it means for her to like the anime villain? Dude, like, if it was like a protagonist, someone you could relate with, but dude, it's a villain she likes. I know that that's a whole nother thing. I would need to watch the movie to get more context. Um, but yeah, like I saw XAS came up. Like, if you want to jump in, uh, weigh in on this one, you have the floor. Oh, good. At any point, if you want to speak, feel free. It's totally welcome at any point. Yes, I see a hand up. Um, XS, you can go ahead. Hey, hello, everyone. Um, good evening, GM, wherever you are in the world. Um, first off, that story is... <laughs> man, I, I can't believe it, but for me, I... The situation there is, I won't just like just leave her be like that. I mean, I will like try to get to help her first. Maybe if she has a friend, maybe I can talk to the friend. Maybe she could, I'm, I don't know, talk to her. If she has a family, I'll go contact the family. And you know, in times like that, in relationship like that, things, a lot of things happen. And that's that's exactly the time you actually want to stick to that person. You know. You know, strengthen the relationship. So I'll find every possible means to help her because if it's if not if it's not helping the relationship, it's not helping her. Honestly, so uh, in times like that, I want to fight. I want to stick around and see if and see how I can give her help in any way possible. I mean that. that That's beautiful. I heard up to a few seconds ago and then it cut out to me. Um, I don't know if he's still speaking. Just know that you've rugged if you are still speaking. Um, I heard that I heard up to um, you would want to help her as much as you could. That's what I heard up to. And if it's rugging for you, feel free to um, step down as a speaker and come back. Sometimes that helps make um, it better. Ballistic, if you wanted to jump in, feel free. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's all right to want to help somebody for sure. Um, so you got to be real selective of who you try to help, I think, because uh, it's real easy to play that role, whether it's from genetic dispositions or or like you know just spots of empathy or whatever. Because uh, sometimes that shit ain't gonna help, like. You know, I don't know when I hear that story, it's super, there's a lot of really massive red flags there. Like, 
not only just the obsession with the character like that's that's more even more understandable probably to me than you know just like the um can't can't show any signs of like like why are they trying to compete over liking characters and shit for one and then just yeah just like she can't talk to her about it and it's, it's just all that that's all that real closed off like real just um kind of you know you're always in the wrong side of behavior and like i said i don't mean to use this word lightly but that's like straight up narcissistic shit right there and that's like super unhealthy so uh yeah definitely you know it's good to help people but sometimes you you can't you know you gotta choose wisely because uh you know that that'll be a that'll be a long road of very detrimental uh side effects to uh certain people if you're trying to help everybody you know yeah, yeah, we start saying yes to everybody and then our cup can get too full and then we don't have any more to give because we've given everything we've got. Absolutely. And that's boundaries. That's absolutely boundaries. Well done. So that's so on topic for today. Um, I'll weigh in on this one. So as you guys, oh, you want, uh, Armand wants to speak. Yeah, I'm, I don't have a lot to say. I think there's just a very simple solution to this situation. Uh, the girlfriend here should just do cosplay. <laughs> so there's another creative idea um so okay so let me tell you my reaction to this one so initially I was obviously so mad that this person was doing this to the other person um you know like how can they do that and it just kept getting crazier but I want to and then you know I got to the last sentence of this story and I was able there was there was three things that stood out to me in this story that usually we don't pick up initially when we hear this story so the first thing is um towards the very beginning of it um you know the person that's complaining said it's common to get obsessed with a fictional character i've been there so this person relates to some extent maybe we don't relate to some extent but this person relates to some extent of exhibiting the sort of behavior that her partner is doing The other thing that was mentioned midway through was because um, she is saying, you know, the person who's doing the behavior is saying um, that the other person's being immature and acting like this because it gives her more love and attention than I do. So that highlights that one line because she's engaging with this fictional character because it gives her more love and attention than I do. That's not a small statement. Um, You know, we don't know if they've spent three years of, you know, her wanting love from her partner and not receiving it, that she has to go towards a fictional character to feel more loved. Like, if you're feeling more loved by a fictional character, that's not okay. And so maybe there are some underlying things there that she's never communicated or had the words to communicate and so she's just reacted to going towards this fictional character, maybe to make the partner jealous or that's the only way she can communicate she's upset with the relationship because she's not comfortable being honest about what's really going on. And then the last thing that I want to highlight, which was the very last line of this story, was it's been going on for a week now. So they've been together for three years one week isn't a very long time in a span of three years. So, yes, the reaction is, wow, there's a lot that is not going right here. And um, it's absolutely disrespectful when, you know, the partner said, I'm upset and feeling insecure and jealous because you're doing this, saying, no, you're wrong, I'm right. And, you know, having double standards and all those things are absolutely not okay. Um, But there are underlying things here and we are hearing the story from one side. So I would, I would unpack this further with them. um, If, if I had, you know, if they came to me for advice, just to make sure like what is really going on and, you know, are they willing to work on it? It doesn't seem like they're that willing to work on it for sure, but let's see. And let's see the scope of this one week. Um, let's see if we can come back from that and improve and level up our relationship. Um, there's a lot of things that could probably be uh, improved in this relationship. And maybe they find out that, no, like one, one is just not willing to put in any work and is just being narcissistic. And as soon as you figure that out, run. <laughs> 
But if that's not the case, then it's worth um, fighting for this relationship of three years. Um, maybe they have a lot of great qualities that you can't find elsewhere. Who knows? But you really need to figure this out for sure. Ballistic, go for it. Yeah, my bad. My bad. I didn't mean to interrupt. But one thing I think that like I caught, and I don't know if it was addressed, was that, that it's two females and the character that she's obsessing about is a dude. So there's there's also that uh, element in the mix, right? Maybe she's just going through phases, maybe the, not to be inappropriate, but maybe, you know, the her girl just needs to, like, strap up or something. I don't know. You know, maybe there's just that desire to explain because I don't know what it's like to kind of cross those boundaries. So, um, you know, so that's something else to put into consideration, too. You know, maybe she's, like, needing just that, that like, testosterone or, or masculine, like, uh, kind of, uh, missing something like that in their relationship who knows you know so that's a, that's a really important factor i think that stood out that was kind of overlooked ballistic i love that you're speaking because this is something that i completely missed and so like i'm so proud of you that's such a great point because you're right like what if she is bisexual in this situation or i don't know the the whole sexual um you know, sexuality is a, it's a dimension. So they've done a lot of research into this so far in psychology and that's what they've concluded. It's not like you're at one end of the spectrum or the other, you know, there's all these things in between. So maybe she's not feeling sexually satisfied and saying this, you know, male villain can satisfy me more sexually than you can. And maybe that's a whole nother situation we haven't even thought. Well, I haven't even thought of but ballistic was on the ball to think of. That was amazing detection. So exactly, exactly. And that's why we can all learn from each other and level up. And um, just because I know quite a lot about relationships doesn't mean I know everything. I like have, you know, uh, we can all learn every single one of us, including me, including everyone who, you know, is specialized in relationships. So love that attention to detail. You're on the ball. Um, Zal, yes. We get another speaker. Let me bring you up. Zal, go for it. I had a separate question not related to the Reddit post. Is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Go for it. So um, I have a question based on self-improvement. Um, if your partner isn't as interested in self-improvement as you are, but you want to improve the relationship, what are different tips and tricks you can do to potentially not call it self-improvement, but still be working on growth, if that makes sense? Yes, yes. So you're going to get a little more creative. So one thing that is a good one um, to remember is um, everyone wants to feel loved. And so if you frame it like, you know, we're going to make each other feel feel more loved um, if we can, you know, figure this stuff out. So I want to make you feel as loved as I can. And I feel like sometimes I'm missing the mark or, you know, I don't know what makes you feel most loved. And, you know, sometimes like you do these things that make me, you know, you think you're making me feel really loved, but it actually isn't making me feel that loved. And um, so explaining it in terms of like, she has a lot to gain out of this because, um, you know, she can feel much more loved and you can also feel a lot more loved from her. And if you feel more loved from her, then you're willing to do, you know, a lot of more great things. So that's one helpful one. Zal, what are you going to say? I was just going to say that's a great way of framing it as, you know, instead of growth, the word growth, you know, scares people sometimes. So kind of more love is a, is a really good way of saying it. Thank you. Of course, of course. And if that doesn't work, we can always come up with something else. So feel free to ask any questions at any point. That's what we're here for. And I think something else that also really helps is uh, immediate reinforcement. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like if yeah. someone does something you really like, you just say, oh, my gosh, you made me feel so loved, so happy. And just like do it, do it as soon as they do it. Because, you know, hey, you know, if they know that you like it, and they like you, they'll probably do it more often. Ah, oh, thank you. This is why I get really happy when I teach other people skills and then they remind me at the right time. <laughs> so the best tool, yeah. What are you gonna say? I'm just a Kimia apprentice. No, <laughs> no, no. You're your own person. You're your own person. Um, 
What's it called? Yeah, that's like the best, um, the best skill that we have in psychology, literally, is immediate reinforcement. So if someone does something you like, quickly speak their love language and communicate to them that that was really amazing. You appreciated that and they're more likely to do it again. Ballistic, go for it. Um, yeah, just like working with people in general, like not even just in a relationship, but um, be in any type of, not to say leadership role, but any type of role where you need to try to, to generate some type, you want to motivate somebody or you want to try to, you know, um, get position things in a certain direction or, you know, you want to encourage somebody you want, you're trying to find somebody or help somebody like find that love in themselves. One, definitely the positive reinforcement is huge. Um, there's like so many different ways and everybody's a little bit different and finding the way to like encourage them to do that you know some people respond well to like negative encouragement you know won't respond to positive like if they grew up in a shitty situation where they're used to that like the, the negative reinforcement some people you know so everybody's different right so like you really try to pay attention to the nuances of what what generates that response that you know of that like betterment or that self-improvement or that like self-love or whatever that that um that that that, that your partner is um responsive to you know you got to really pay attention like in any circumstance working with people whether it's a team or anything you really got to find the ways to work with everybody individually because they all respond to different stimulus you know yes yes speaking my language speaking my words um, absolutely. And so many things like we don't even realize how, what patterns are in place. So a lot of the times when you keep having repeated um, arguments that are the same, um, if you actually analyze them and like put it on paper, so it's really visual, like if you notice like, and the easiest way to describe it is like a tantrum of a kid in a store. So imagine the, um, one of the people in the relationship really wants something. Okay. They've asked for it. Now they're throwing a tantrum. Um, and you know, that's like the child throwing the tantrum in the store because they want that toy. And then the other person, you know, really doesn't like that behavior is not okay with it but doesn't know what else to do to calm them down. Everything they are trying just results in more and more tantrum. And then they're like, okay, I will get you that toy or I'll give you what you want. And even though it's probably past their boundaries, they're not okay with it. Their cup is full and they're still saying yes because they don't know what else to do. And then the child or the partner calms down because they get what they want and then they realize the next time that they want something, the only way they're going to get what they want is to tantrum. And so we're actually reinforcing this negative behavior that, yes, if you want something, the only way I'm going to agree is if you throw a tantrum. And so, and, you know, tantrum can be all sorts of things. It could be whatever's upsetting you. But I'm just using this simple example to highlight a pattern that could be reinforcing itself that's not healthy and um, you know that person that's tantruming might have every capability to communicate differently but when they've communicated differently nothing's worked so maybe they do ask politely they do say it clearly but nothing happens and only if they get really mad is anything ever going to happen so once you identify that pattern, you can peel it back and, you know, you can get both people on the same page. Like, you know, if a partner is asking for something reasonably, calmly, um, you know, how can we put things in place to make sure that, you know, you have a reasonable discussion where, you know, you can both get what you want at that stage before it gets to this whole um, tantrum thing where that behavior gets reinforced. We want to encourage the person's behavior, speaking respectfully, uh, speaking clearly with what they want, being very specific with what they want. Um, we want to really reinforce that. So that's a whole thing in itself to be able to level up big patterns that are um, not working for you in relationships. So that's just a handy thing to know. Um, we, do have, we do have two more. Let's see if people still want to do it. So we've got another Reddit question. It's a 29-year-old female and a 28-year-old male. So it says, my husband wants me to ask him for permission. That's the title. And the background on this one is, 
My husband wants me to ask him for permission to do things such as hanging out with friends or going out after work with co-workers. I can understand letting him know, but I feel weird having to ask him for permission. He knows how I feel, but claims I don't respect him. He has resorted to giving me the silent treatment. For more context, we have been together for many years, but have been married for one. I have asked him for permission in the past for things and he has told me no. Should I give in and ask him for permission? The summary was husband wants me to ask him for permission to hang out with my friends. He is upset I won't do it. So if you have a friend that comes to you with this and they're like, please give me some advice. What do you think? Zal, I see your hand. I was just going to say, I think the silent treatment is a really poor form of communication. Instead of communicating, you're doing actually the exact opposite. And I think that's super toxic in a relationship. It, it's um, not beneficial for either party. And that needs to be addressed first before, you know, other things, because that seems like a systemic problem in the relationship. Yeah, yeah, systemic problem um, is is very likely that it's the situation. You know, if they're like, again, we're assuming silent treatment is a long period of time, but like maybe he's just taking two minutes of not talking, like we don't know. Like taking a two minute break to gather your thoughts is, is like, okay, we're not like saying being silent is bad in every single context. But yeah, in general, if you're like silent treatmenting for like a day like that or two or three days, like that is just getting out of hand. Um, I see a hand. Go for it. So I feel like a lot of that also goes with the rest of the context of the post of not allowing for permission. And it seems like control is a big part of this relationship and it seems to me from my understanding of this brief snippet and context that he's using the silent treatment to attempt to control his wife and that's why I feel like it's super toxic yeah crypto go for it thank you Zal hi how's it going Camille hi great to see you yeah yeah, how's it going Uh, I was listening to you for a while I was busy, so I couldn't turn up uh, early. Um, regarding this, I think you can uh, consider it two options. Depends what context it is. Because maybe the man he, he would like just have a better communication, not necessarily to um, have a permission as he have uh, control over her partner, but just like just maybe just have a better communication, something like, oh, babe, you don't mind if I go with my friends today, maybe they have a kids and stuff like that. So, or maybe he just try to be like submissive and just try to have control over it. So I think you've got like two case scenarios, depends what it is. I never had problems with my current partner about things like that. It was more kind of, because I have a stepson, so it's more kind of thing like, oh, babe, you know, like, um, uh, the little boy is finishing school. You don't mind to if I go, you know, with my friends, would you stay with him? That kind of thing instead of more like respectful and, and more like, and, and it depends, I think, what people, what kind of connection people have, you know, because relating to previous thing, what you were saying, I think is a lot, a big issue. Like what I saw to, uh, when we spoke yesterday is um, the similarities and also people have need to be aware of the fact that every person is different. Every individual will react differently on certain action. So maybe the man, he's used to something like this because, because he like majority of um, his previous relationship with that kind of way, then the women were okay with that kind of behavior or letting him controlling her kind of thing. Or... Or maybe it's a culture thing as well. Like, you know, in a lot of co- cultures, you have a man which is very strong and, um, you know, traditional kind of, uh, you know, like back in the days when a man was providing for women and caring for, you know, um, bringing income home and stuff like that. And the woman was the person staying at home looking after kids. So it, it is a lot of things when, you know, to consider it, I would say. But um, I think it's the important part of it is just talking to each other and understand each other what what we want. And if we not feel like okay, to, to be honest, like I don't I don't like the way you're doing it. You can always I think it's the way you approach people and say, 
babe, you know what? Like, if you approach me a different way, or can we talk about it? Or maybe what do you mean? Just sit down and say, this is actually what you mean to control me and imprison me in our life because we married and stuff like that. Or actually, you just want a better communication. That's what I think is, you know, the main thing. <laughs> Sorry for being a bit <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I love how you've explained it um, because it does depend on context and it does depend on communication. Um, and, you know, just like Sal was saying, if you're getting controlling vibes, say that. Say, I'm getting controlling vibes. Is that kind of what you were trying to do? Or like, you know, I'm okay with sharing things, but I think in the context that said you told me no once and maybe she got really upset. And you can talk about it and then figure out that, you know, where your partner's coming from, where you're coming from and, and come up with a plan. But, you know, um, it seems like, you know, in this situation, a boundary has been crossed with the husband where he has not been informed. And who knows what those situations were that have made him upset to feel like a boundary was crossed. And that's okay to feel like your boundary is crossed. So he's expressing that he would like to be told when things are happening um, he would appreciate that. And now it's in the court of the other person to be able to have that conversation back and, you know, either say yes if they have the bandwidth or, you know, have the conversation, figure out what compromise is okay. Or if it's a no, then figure out, you know, is there another way that you can still make them feel loved and keep communicating until you figure it out. Um, this actually, this specific situation, Arman and I... Um, had to figure out you know this actually is a problem <laughs> when I want to so I love traveling and so when someone invites us on like a trip or something that I've been worse in the past but I like kind of say yes and like really want to go and want Armand to come with me and um and then he's like you know you didn't even ask me <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, you're right. You're right. It was with my family. I got swept up in the motion, like all these things. Like, <laughs> She's like, we're going to London. <laughs> what? <laughs> like you didn't answer your phone. I had to make a rash decision. The tickets were running out. Like uh, all crazy things. Um, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I think if you have like a chilled partner, is a different. I think it's a lot about relationship in general. Like if you know each other, like. Yeah you know like your best friends and stuff like that you you know what you can kind of do or you cannot do or if that is probably because of like a way of just communication in your relationship from this what i can kind of sense which is the same with my partner you know it's like sometimes i just make a joke like kind of thing because i think men in general just um you always will relate to this what men used to do in the past as an old school kind of thing you know just be traditional and yeah it would be nice if you actually um, just tell me just I think men men in general likes to feel like he, he he's like the alpha man and he make the final call kind of thing you know I always say um, that I'm I'm the head in a relationship but Messi is the neck you know so that kind of you know you can be the the crown but the queen always have the right thing to turn the head that way or that way you know that kind of you know it's not like challenging each other just just be together kind of support to each other and just go the same direction instead of use the energy to fight with each other you can actually build something together you know that kind of thing so and yeah this is it's a difficult thing to to do i think in relationship in general it is it is and so yeah <laughs> and so we are um we are like best friends and you know um so we're okay like it's not like it was the end of the world when I did something like this but I did it I did it a, a bit too many times and he realized um it was crossing some boundaries for him so now whenever there's anything um he's like please uh please communicate with me or like you know sometimes if I were invited to like a dinner to mm -hmm. some family friend's house or something like that he might have plans with his friends so if I say I'm going to this and I want you to come or something like that, or I'm going and he's planned something to do with me. That's something that I didn't expect. And so that's where communication comes in, like Ballistic was saying. So, uh, sorry, uh, Crypto Deadpool was saying. So um, that's why um, it, I don't see it as a control thing um, that, for example, my husband wants to know, uh, you know, 
what we're doing at you know times that are not you know out of the norm if i'm doing something different or if i'm committing us to <laughs> some sort of trip like, going to europe <laughs> going to europe he should be able to have his say and it should be respected and i understand that and so i have to do um and i have been doing better i have been really trying to work on it but i want to do you think i've been working on it yeah, she's she's definitely been working on it. You can be honest if you don't think I am. No, like you've you've definitely got better. You know, it's not perfect. There are still times when you're like, hey, this this person, you know, we're going with this person, you know, over there, and I'm like, what? <laughs> but it doesn't happen so often anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's good. That's good. Okay, so we can all we can all grow and improve, including me. <laughs> So, um, yes, there's one last Reddit question if you, if you guys are up for it. So I imagine you're still here, so you're up for one more last one. So this one's actually, this one gets tough, and it uses so many of our skills to be able to solve this one and give good advice. So just be, just be ready for it. This one's going to be um, a bit hard. So it's a 26-year-old female and a 27-year-old male. So the title of this one is, I am moving out of my alcoholic boyfriend's apartment, but I want to stay in the relationship. And they also have an update on this one. So I'll first read um, the story and also give you the update. So I've been with my boyfriend for about five years now, and we love each other very much. He's always had a drinking problem, but it's become so much worse in the past year. He is never a mean drunk, just belligerent. It makes him so sad that even when he's physically with me, he's never mentally present. I've talked to him about this so many times and I've always make empty threats that I will leave, if, but I never follow through. I'm so worried um, that me sticking by his side is just enabling his drinking and preventing him from bettering himself. More than anything, I just want him to be happy and healthy, even if it's not with me. Recently, my friend broke up with her long-term partner and suggested we get a place together. I agreed and talked to my boyfriend about it. He was clearly against it. Yesterday, he saw a message on my phone from my friend asking about apartment touring dates, and he freaked out. I felt so bad. It really hurts to see him this sad, but I feel like I need to do this for myself. I told him that I'd like to remain in a relationship and that he can come and visit me at my new place, but only on days when he is sober. I left it in his hands whether he wants to continue the relationship, but I made it known that regardless, I'm not changing my mind. Is it stupid to want to continue being together? Could it ever work or will it will it just resent me? Um, I'm moving out because of my boyfriend's drinking, but I want to stay together. And then they provide an update. So the update on this story is since all of this happened, he's been really down and depressed. He even talked about taking his own life and has had a huge effect on me. I genuinely don't think I could handle it if he hurt himself because of me. Yesterday, he promised he would never touch a drink again if I stayed, but I've already made up my mind. I am mostly worried that his sobriety now depends on if I remain in his apartment with him and it breaks my heart because I know I need to leave for my own mental health. Would it be wrong of me to still leave even though he's quitting drinking? He says that if I move out, he will no longer have a reason to stay sober. I am so torn. Now, do I communicate to him that I love and care for him, but I need to do this for myself? Boyfriend promised to stop drinking if I stayed, but I'm not happy here. This is a tough one. Does anyone want to weigh in if someone had a friend like this who came to you for advice? Where would you even start with something like this? anyone want to be brave here um yeah i don't know it's that's hard man it's like when it comes to like uh substance abuse and shit like that if you're in a relationship and then you cross that boundary so many times like 
it's real easy for people to say that they're going to change or whatnot. And I'm sure I've probably been on both sides of this coin. And, uh, and then, but you, but it's like, you already went, there's, there's only so many straws, you know what I'm saying? And so that's hard. That's a tough one, man. And then, do you know, usually that's something that takes a lot of time to be able to prove to somebody. And if you're utilizing them as a crutch to be like, no, if you, I don't have a reason without you and whatever that shows a lot of lack of self care in a, in a way that that's going to be a troublesome situation anyway. Um, because somebody should really, whether they're with someone or not, I mean, I understand the emotion involved, but like, you should still want to do that for yourself to be good for yourself anyway, theoretically. So it's kind of like putting them in a shitty situation, using them as a crutch. And, uh, that's kind of controlling and manipulative that comes along with a lot of substance abuse in relationships anyway. So it's kind of, that's a touchy one. You're introducing a whole nother dynamic there. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I appreciate your empathy on both sides. Um, anyone else want to weigh in on this really tough one and just give their opinion or even so with skill that we're practicing today is boundaries. Does anyone want to um, take a guess at where the boundaries were crossed if they had to kind of try and pinpoint it in this story? I just asked my husband if he wants to weigh in, and he said, I don't, I don't feel qualified. <laughs> feel qualified. I think the boundaries crossed a lot when he says, like, big time. When I didn't, I kind of missed the first part of it, but when he, you know, says he's threatened to kill himself and stuff, um, that's a huge, that's a huge boundary cross right there. I mean, of course you're like, oh no, like, but if I feel responsible for this and I can't take that, and, but that's just a super bad situation to put your, loved one in you know um like i dated a girl for a while and she was like a cutter and she would do that and like act out and shit and uh it was really bad and then and then you know it put me pushed me to the point where i just had to like throw her out of my house eventually and wish, wish her the best like call her parents and be like yo i'm sorry but i can't because it was it just gets into it gets into a really vicious cycle when that uh, starts happening when you're threatening self-harm and shit according to how this person acts you know and so it's really unfair to do to people so that's the boundary that I would say was crossed. I didn't hear the whole story, though, but, so I apologize. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on here, um, especially when you kind of threaten your life in the mix of all this. Um, so if I was, yes, so that's that's one boundary that for sure is, is you know, being crossed because, um, you know, you're just putting the other person in, you know, a, a really really tough situation and you're also going through a tough situation yourself um, some things um, that stood out to me as being um, boundaries one was um, you know she said she's been with her boyfriend for five years um, and that he's been he's always had a drinking problem so hopefully like you know you should you should have a think about before you get with someone what your boundaries are and what your deal breakers are. So, if she had known that a drinking problem is a is a deal breaker for her, then she could have made a decision better at the very beginning. Um, if she was kind of okay with you know to some level of drinking problem, like where is your comfortability level up to? Like how many drinks in? Or what type of behavior up to are you okay with? So thinking about these things before you get with someone is really helpful to know if you're, you know, going to spend a lot of your love and energy with the right person. So that that's one boundary. I'm not sure if the boundary was crossed at the beginning, if she was okay with being with someone who had a drinking problem. Um, and then she mentioned the last year. Oh, yeah. yeah you I was just going to mention that. She said it got a lot worse in the last year. That's what it, yeah, good stuff, <laughs> good stuff. So, um, yeah, and then straight after that, she says it became worse in the past year. And so that to me signals that for a whole year, the boundaries kept being crossed and, um, you know, she wasn't able to um, kind of stand up for herself for a whole year where it escalated. So, um Maybe she didn't communicate it well. Maybe it wasn't being heard well from the other person. Um, but, you know, there was a whole year that she realized she was aware that this was something she's not okay with. 
And um, one, her one strategy to deal with it was threatening to leave. And so I want you guys to really listen to this one. Threatening to leave in a relationship is a kiss of death on a relationship because you're constantly putting the threat of leaving and making the other person feel really anxious um, and not safe in the relationship because um, you want to be in a relationship where you feel safe, that you're going to work through it together. If really there's such a huge thing in the relationship where it really is a deal breaker and you're thinking about leaving, that's not a small statement or not something to be used as a threatening tactic. Um, you know, you can communicate that, look, if I hit a 10 out of 10, to me that is leaving and to me that is you cheating on me, that is you being domestically violent with me, whatever it is for you. Um, you can communicate that to your partner and you can say, hey, look, like your drinking problem was like a five out of 10 for me the last four years. But this last year, um, these things escalated and be specific about what escalated. And that five went to a nine. And I really don't want it to get to a 10 because I love you. But honestly, if this keeps happening and it keeps escalating, it really is going to a 10 and 10 is I'm going to leave. I'm going to give you warning, um, but you're at a 9 or you're at an 8.5 and that's not okay. We need to bring the scale back. Um, and if they keep violating that, um, then you you do choose to leave. But threatening to leave and then staying and threatening to leave and staying is really unhealthy for a relationship. So there's so many other skills you can put into place to be able to try and address it. But please have that as a very last resort. I don't use it. Like if you're going to leave, like say it and leave. Um, like be consistent with what you say and what you do um, because it can, it can get really messy if you keep threatening to leave and then not leave. So that was, you know, her main tactic of dealing with this, which, um, you know, hasn't been helpful because now she's like, I'm actually going to leave and, you know, at the beginning, he probably didn't really believe her because she didn't mean it. And now that she's actually practically able to do this, now she's firmly decided that for her mental health, she needs to leave. And that's really hard for him to just out of nowhere um, be able to also, you know, believe that this is actually happening. And, you know, he actually said that he would stop. And I know someone can say that and not do it and it's very difficult to stop but it was a very big thing for this person to say I'm going to stop alcohol um, completely um, you know maybe there's other ways of doing it that's more effective but um, some people actually can um, put an end to it and again we don't know their whole situation and it could be way more toxic and you know there's a whole bunch of things that could be in play that I'm not considering um, but that was his last card on the table that I'm going to change, please stay. And so her only answer to that was, no, I'm leaving and you can visit me if you're sober, which is something, you know, she is offering to still stay in the relationship and to still see him. Um, but yeah, then he had to escalate and be like, look, I'm, you know, don't feel like I can do this. And then you mentioned the whole ending his life thing. So it's really tough that, it, you know, if it pushes a person to that extent because it is, it's, it's not a very well-balanced relationship and that can affect both people in such a huge way. Um, but, you know, it, she was quite, because she let her boundaries cross so many times, she reached a point where she has no more to give. Her cup was overflowing for about a year. And she didn't say anything until it got to this point where her friend got out of a relationship and wanted to move in together. So please don't let things get so out of control where your boundaries keep getting crossed and you keep, um, you know, finding ineffective ways to communicate your upset. Like really address it um, very specifically, very directly, very honestly. And um, you need to put good things in place to be able to 
de-escalate and not let it escalate any further and for them to understand the gravity of the situation of how serious it is and that if you hit that point like it's over because it's a deal breaker for you like the boundary turns into a deal breaker and that's it and that's perfectly okay for you to have boundaries it's perfectly okay for you to have deal breakers but please don't um, diminish your own feelings by saying it's okay, it's okay, and dealing with your boundaries continuously being violated. That's not okay um, because things just escalate and they can get pretty, pretty bad. So at this stage, you know, I would really, if the person came to me, I would really have to unpack with them, um, you know, what where their boundaries are now with this person, you know, Um how long would they have to be sober or like how long would they, um, you know, what would they need to do for her to feel comfortable to move back in? And, you know, what would be the boundary for, you know, him violating it again and not letting it drag out any further if it's violated. So, or maybe, you know, she needs that space and she realizes I, I don't want to be with this person because, They've just not taken my feelings into consideration for years and I've expressed it to them so many times. So this is a complicated one. There's so many skills that need to be used to be able to tackle this one. Um, But the main takeaway from from this one, even though it's the hardest one that we did at the end, was um, just noticing when someone's boundaries are just continuously crossed. And if you notice yourself doing that or, you know, someone that's coming to you for advice doing that, really get them to figure out what their boundaries are, what their deal breakers are, and to address them directly and uh, honestly and specifically and let them know what you need uh, for the situation to improve and de-escalate and then stick to your word. If they keep um, crossing your boundaries, that's not okay. You've given them sufficient warning. They need to respect and they need to grow and improve themselves because they love you. They need to show you that they love you too. It's not a one-way street. So um, that's that's boundaries. Does anyone have any questions, stories, comments, anything they want to um, be able to bring to the floor right now? The floor is yours. Okay. All right. Beautiful. I'm sorry I ended on such a serious one. I should I should make a lighthearted one at the end just to bring every everyone back. Um, Mazda, I see you're requesting to speak. I'm just letting you up. Go for it. I don't know, he went up and then we went back down again. I don't know what happened. Um, that's okay. That's okay. If he wants to come back up, he can. Okay. Thanks. Yes. People might have something that's like a bit too much, or like, how do you find the when boundaries are good for you, and like sometimes they can be too much, or like, how do you find the balance between having uh, the boundaries? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's something that you'll need to, um, so I guess it's two ways. It's if your partner is having too many boundaries or if you're having too many boundaries, it's a two-way street. So if um, in, in both situations, um, you know, how often are they saying no? <laughs> and, um, you know, if you're feeling um, unloved and you're feeling like you're giving a lot more than what you're receiving, Um, that's probably something to talk about. So that's probably, you know, maybe they just don't have that much bandwidth because of the, um, you know, the lifestyle and all the things that they've committed to and they've said yes to too many things. And now um, with the people that they really value, they don't have enough time uh, anymore or so many other things are drawing on their energy and time. So they have to say no to a lot of things with you. And um, if you're noticing that, it's okay to bring it up. Um, if you're someone's partner, you really should be their number one priority. Um, kids, you know, can also be up there. Um, but it, it is really important to prioritize your loved ones over thing, other things. 
and it's difficult um, and it's hard to bring up when you feel like it's it's um, not equal. Um, I definitely, I know what it feels like and it's tough and um, but you do need to be able to speak your mind and just notice if things are not balanced or, you know, that, you know, some things can be really important to you. Like, um, and this is like where love languages can come in again. Like um, every, every week for date night, um, we watch a new movie every week. And, um, you know, we usually try and do like something special, like with what we eat, it's like different in some way. Or like we play a game or just like we try and add new things um to to make it you know out of the norm um to be able to you know have something exciting and make um, our relationship fun but if he came home and was like hey like I don't have time today that much for date night um instead of watching a movie um can we just go out to eat in a nice restaurant like he might not think that that is a big deal Um, But maybe it is a huge deal for me and he just doesn't know how huge of a deal it is for me. So it's, it's my job to communicate when something's really important because sometimes maybe they're saying no because it's crossing a boundary to them, but they haven't taken into consideration how important it is to you. Um, like if, if I say, Hey, look like today, like out of all days, I was so excited to watch this one movie. I've literally been building it up in my head for the last week. Um, like I was looking forward to this. I've had like the worst week. And like for you to say no to watching this movie right now is just heartbreaking. Like it's like, it just feels like a seven out of 10, like disappointment that I'm feeling. And I know it's you know, it doesn't make sense and it's not a big deal, but that's just how I feel. And you're allowed to feel however you feel about whatever you feel. (laughs) So I can still say that and it's okay. And, you know, he can still, he has the choice to say no still. He has the choice to compromise or he has the choice to weigh in. Maybe saying no to him was four out of 10 important. And, you know, he heard it was seven out of 10 important. So maybe he can be like, okay, okay. So like, how about, We do watch the movie together, but like we don't go out to eat today um, because I really need to do this thing. And, you know, going out to dinner might not be that important to me. It's probably like a two out of 10. So I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. Okay, I'm still going to get what I want. And um, it's still like a pretty win-win situation. Um, I'm all about the win-win situations. And um, you usually don't have to sacrifice a lot if you can figure out what is um, the most efficient thing for your partner to do. And sometimes it's not that hard. Um, You just have to know them pretty well to figure out what it is and, you know, be able to have um, that really mature conversation about your feelings and be honest um, and figure it out. So hopefully if you're noticing your partner saying no a lot, that's where it's gotten too far. Um, and, and being able to call it out is okay. I, hopefully that answered your question, Mazda. If it didn't, let me know. Call it out. Call out your boundaries. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, has anyone else got anything they want to say? All right, sounds good, sounds good. And guys, I don't expect you guys to just magically figure out boundaries immediately from having this session. It takes time, it takes practice. You need to hear it a bunch of times. You need to practice it a bunch of times in different situations and really work this skill. Um, as you heard today in some of the, the situations I brought up with my husband, um, you know, we can all improve on things and, um, you know, figuring out where our boundaries are and communicating them is something that we will all practice for the rest of our lives. So the sooner we start practicing, the better we'll get at it and the better we can notice it and be able to have healthy relationships. So hopefully this has been like a good intro and don't expect perfection from yourselves um, to be able to just get all the boundaries right. That's not, you know, it's not human. We're not perfect. Um, and yeah, it's just awesome that you guys are here 
and put, making an intentional effort to work on your relationships and level up. And I honestly, um, I'm so proud of every single one of you in this room because um, you are actually um, making an effort and a lot of people um, just put their relationships to the side and don't do these things. So thank you so much. I see a hand up, so I'm just going to bring you up, Andrea. Andrea, go ahead if you want to say anything. Hi there. I finally had a chance to kind of Hi. speak. I know we're getting towards the end of the space. I was uh, quite busy most of the night, but I was able to listen um, from the very beginning. Um, just want to say thank you for taking the time uh, to have such a, you put so much effort into um, preparing for the space, giving realistic, real life examples. Um, I love how engaging the conversation was. Um, I wish I was able to provide some of my feedback and some of my, um, um, yeah, just, just my side of things as well. But unfortunately, it was just one of those nights. But um, I appreciate you also taking on the topic of boundaries, as I know we talked about this last week in uh, Psych Dara Space. And um, I feel like it's a topic that I feel like should be, um, should be talked about more often. At least, you know, as I was growing up, um, I feel that I could have definitely benefited from having more conversations about boundaries and what that means and to not look at it as a bad thing. Because I think that was one of the problems I had growing up is looking at boundaries as, you know, you're, you're difficult or, um, you know, just not feeling comfortable with setting them because I didn't want people I didn't want the impression from others that you know I'm a difficult humor or somebody I'm just difficult to deal with um, but I don't see that the same way anymore uh, but that's taken some time and I feel like only in the last few years and I'm 32 um, I wish I had more of these conversations uh, growing into my 20s because uh, I feel like this would have helped me in many situations with many of types of relationships not just romantic but business friendships etc so I really appreciate you taking the time to do this space. I think it's very beneficial on so many levels for so many here, and especially being in web three, you know, I feel like that's one of another type of boundary um, is social boundaries. Um, you know, our use of social media. Um, it's very difficult to also place boundaries in that regard, especially with technology. Um, you know, so some, that's something I've had to learn being in web three in the last two and a half years. Um, is setting my own boundaries of what works for me. Unfortunately, some may not agree with it, but that's okay because ultimately if I didn't have those boundaries set, I wouldn't be probably still not be here. I wouldn't be here. I probably would be experiencing burnout much more frequently and feel like I'm pouring into others, but not pouring into myself. Um, so I had to look at it from, you know, if I'm an angle that it's not selfish to take time for yourself and your mental health. Um, you know, I love being here. I love supporting the community. I love being here in web three, but it can be very tricky when you have in real life obligations to your job, family, social life, it can be hard to tackle t Twitter on top of that. I wanted to say it was one thing my friend told me, she said, you know, here's one of the big tips that she gave me is watch what you consume. What are you consuming in a day? And I said, that's a really great question to ask. And that's something I ask myself on a daily basis is what am I consuming today? Is it contributing to how I feel today? Is Twitter making me feel anxious today? Um, it's quite a common question I ask myself. And it's not because of the people necessarily, but because I'm human, I have limits. I have, you know, Again, I have boundaries. I have, I have a tolerance as well. And that's unique to everybody. And so for some, they're able to be on Twitter more often, more frequently. And that's okay. Cool. That's great. That's awesome. But there's times where I just can't. And it's very difficult at times to accept that. But that's just the way it works for me. Those are my boundaries. And for those who are, you know, who are close to me, who love me, who support me, will respect my boundaries that I place for myself here in the space on Twitter, other social media apps. And I feel that this is also something that others should also consider um, because it's not, if I didn't do that, I probably wouldn't be here. So I just wanted to share that as well. I wasn't planning to, <laughs> to share all of that. So I apologize for the uh, little ramble there, but um, 
yeah, so I appreciate you very much for hosting this space. Um, I look forward to more of your spaces in the future because I feel that we're all a work in progress. We don't, if anybody says they have it all together, they're lying. Um, so that's something I, <laughs> I tell myself is what can I do to improve uh, from a relationship aspect because that's just something I've struggled with in different areas. And boundaries, I think if we don't, have, if there's no boundaries, then it's gonna be difficult down the line. So the more that we, um, we practice, establishing our boundaries figure out what our boundaries are and then upholding them because it takes it takes a lot of energy to just keep them in place right it's one thing to say this is my boundary but are you doing the work and action in place to actually continue with that um and how, what do you do with that how do you react in situations where somebody may not like your boundary how do you tackle those as well so it's not easy it's not easy and sometimes it can be very uncomfortable and that's something that I'm working to navigate as well in many different areas of my life. So I hope this uh, was valuable to some of you as well. And uh, I'm not perfect. Neither, neither of us are. And uh, I think these spaces are so valuable. So thank you again for your time and for everybody here up on stage as well, who also gave their input, their story and just their energy into the space today. I think it's, uh, we need to have these more often. So again, look forward to your next space. Thank you. Thank you. That warmed my heart so much. And you were just speaking the truth. And it just made me so happy. Um, yeah, we have these every week, every Thursday, 8pm Eastern Standard, same time. We'll be here next week, new topic. I love. So to everyone in the space today, I was on a space on Monday. And I hadn't picked the topic for this week yet. And Andrea was like, boundaries would be such a good one. And I've never met Andrea before. And I was like, it would be. And that's literally how today's topic was born. And um, I, it, Andrea, it means a lot to me that you said you would come today and you did. You were there from the beginning and your words match your actions. And um, I can't say that about everyone. So that's a huge um, positive for me. And I really appreciate you uh, for being here and you know, just showing your support in every way you could. Um, it means a lot. And 100% we're all a work in progress. No one has it figured out. If they say it, it's not true. And um, I'm just so proud of you. Like I just hear so much growth in your mentality of how you're speaking and how you're standing up for um, your boundaries. And you're going to be so much happier the more you practice this because you're exactly the reason you said you wouldn't be here if you weren't enforcing some of your boundaries. So our lives can just improve um, in ways that we can't even imagine um, once we start putting some of these skills to practice. And we don't have to be perfect at it. We can still make mistakes, but we can still notice the improvement and be like, oh, wow, like this thing is a good thing. Like I'm going to practice it. So Thank you so much um, for all your support and everybody here, um, you know, you, you chose to make an intentional step to work on your relationships and I have so much admiration for that, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I can't tell you um, how proud I am of you guys and um, I'm just going to post the Twitter space soon for next week's one and would love to see you there. I will pick the topic soon. Um, I'll just give it to the floor. Is there anyone who has a topic that they would like for next week? Um, the floor is yours to bring it up. If there's something you would like to unpack further, I'm open to it. So I'll give you guys a moment to think about it. And if you have a topic in mind, feel free to become a speaker or just unmute and share it. If you guys come up with anything, feel free to DM me. I respond to my messages. Um, and I will also be thinking about, you know, what is like the most bang for buck skill that I can teach you guys next week and um, find some good Reddit questions that we can all get behind. And I'm going to try and end with a funnier one so we like have more uplifted spirits at the, end of the, at the end of the spaces. And I wish you guys all the love lives of your dreams. And I will see you next week. I will see you next week, same time. Have an amazing night, you guys. Bye. All the best, everyone. Thanks, Kimia. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.